Hey everybody, um, I wanted to welcome you tonight and uh, I wanted to, first of all, I wanted to thank you guys for um, being here tonight because uh, these nights and especially the nights where we show up and like I actually talk to the camera, it gives me a reason to dry my hair, put on some mascara, you know, put some earrings on, uh, change change out of pajamas <laughs> so hey Kelly good to see you um so I'm I'm so glad you guys are here to join me on Friday night um I, seriously I, I wasn't joking I tried making the drink that uh, my friend from a couple weeks ago shared with us and uh, first of all I didn't realize hibiscus simple syrup was that easy to make it really it took me 10 minutes and this is both delicious and dangerous, so um, I, I will be sipping this. Uh, but I hope you guys have brought a, uh, brought a beverage, and I hope you have you know, brought uh, something that you can paint with, or if you're just watching, that's great too. If you're drawing, whatever, I'd love to create with you. I think that's so much fun and so amazing. And tonight, if you have any questions, Put them either in the question box below or you know request to share a screen and um, I'll I might be a little bit delayed because I have to turn around to see the camera um, but I will definitely um, I, I'd love to chat with you guys tonight let's just enjoy pain and the creative process and get to know each other oh you're about to make a mojito that's amazing. Um, so I just got hibiscus from, we have a, a little local store called Rollin' Oats. It's a little local grocery store and um, it's kind of like a local Whole Foods and they have a bulk section and you get just, just get dried hibiscus and it was, this is so pretty. It's The camera is giving it a weird color but it's this beautiful pink rosé and it's bubbly and tasty and just amazing that was a little bit of lemon peel but uh yeah so thank you guys for joining me tonight um i did want to talk about last time i worked on this i was just kind of like chatting with a friend and didn't really have a plan and i do palm trees a lot so i was just you know working with a general idea i didn't have a whole lot going on and so this was okay but if you're really working to like make a really strong painting, like I do try to have some kind of plan going into it, like some idea. I've worked with a lot of color and so there is a little bit of exploration that goes on, but it does help if you have a general map and an idea. And um, we only have an hour tonight, so clearly I can't get this whole painting done. Um, but what I'm going to try my best to do is really, you know, take you guys through like the thought process of working a little bit bigger. And for all of you that have a class pass for next week or the monthly class pass, um, this weekend I'm going to be asking you what subject matter we want to paint because next week we're over the three nights. We'll take one thing and work on it big. Um, I mean, not like gigantic. But bigger than eight by ten and I'll show you you know how to take a reference photo how to expand it how to make it bigger and then you know really how to plan and then work through the painting so you can so that you can get an idea of you know what goes into a larger painting versus a smaller painting the surprisingly the mechanics of it aren't that different it it mostly involves a whole lot of um, it's, it, it, once you get the basics down, you just need bigger brushes and more paint. Um, so the basics are generally the same. Um, the one thing that I did do in between the last time I, paint, I worked on painting this and now is I came up with a color scheme. And so this is, we're doing party palms. So, um, and then working on some stuff to like really go in depth and teach you guys a little bit more 
And so I've been working on like creating color charts and color wheels so that you guys can learn some more. Um, and if you notice this color chart that I came up with, it really is mostly blues and greens. So it's a lot of this part of the color wheel right here. And so all of these colors, they're either the pure color or slightly more neutral versions of everything from a violet blue to a yellow green. So they're all next to each other. So they all work well together. And then I have a little, but the predominant color is a green. But I go everything from here all the way to here. And then I have a little pop of this and I have a little pop of this, and I have a little pop of pink. And so just these little accent colors are kind of what make it a party. So you see I have this orange, I have this purple, and I have this pink. And those are the colors that really make it a party. But, um, you know, with any party that you're throwing, um, you have to have the main theme and then you have like the little things that jazz it up, but if it's all about the extra zhuzh, it, it can be a little over the top and it can be a little bit too much. So, I mean, that's that's the way I like to work with color. There are certainly people that um, only work in the very saturated colors and they do some like really cool, beautiful stuff. Um, I really like to work with a lot of these colors and and make them a little bit more neutral so they work generally with everyday life and kind of what people usually have with their decor and in their homes and so they can enjoy them every day and then they get then they get some of these more saturated colors as accents but it's not like a a full on assault of color so like i said if you have any questions feel free to ask um let's see Oh geez, brush sizes. So today I'm going to be using, if I can find it. I was kind of coming in and cleaning up. I'm gonna be using mostly this brush, this is a 12. And as far as like how much paint to put on the brush, it really is, this is gonna sound like a wishy-washy answer, but it depends on how you paint. You will figure out how much paint to put on your brush. Don't be afraid of wasting paint. Um, because the better you learn and the more paint you use, the better you'll get. Um, I tend to paint thinly, so I'll put, I run out of paint faster and my, um, I don't have super thick paint, but that's just my style. I've, tr I've tried impasto. It's just not my thing. Um, and then right now, because I'm working with you guys today, um, I have squeezed out a lot more colors than I normally use. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can not put this up my nose and make it super awkward while showing you guys sort of what my palette looks like. Right. So I have used, um, I have several different tube colors that I use. I generally don't use a lot of yellow. This Australian Sienna that I use is, um, I use that mostly as my yellow. And I have a whole bunch of different blues and greens because they're the predominant color palette. And then I use a white green, and this is the Van Dyke Brown. And I usually arrange them from yellow through the spectrum until you get back to green. So the, the purple and the pink uh, should be switched if you're being correct. But that's kind of generally how I do it, if that makes sense. So I start with yellow and I go, um, let's see, I start with yellow and I go, I go yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, uh, green. Yeah. Yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, green. Yeah. That's how I go. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get started and I've been putting in, I've been kind of working on some of my dark colors 
and fleshing out the darks just a little bit better than I had them when I was uh, freeforming a couple weeks ago. Um, and what I'm going to come in is, this is one thing I love to do. It's, it's similar to laying down the ground, is I'm going to add, I come in and these, this purple, uh, I like to add it into the darks and into the underpainting because it then peeks out later. We're going to cover up probably 90% of these next two colors. But you can kind of add them, and it doesn't have to be, it can be uh, a great turquoise. I like adding a great turquoise is another good color. Like there's, there's all kinds of, this is where you can add, you know, magenta, you can add turquoise. This is a great time to add those super chromatic colors that you don't necessarily want overtaking your entire painting, but would make fabulous accents. And because we're going to cover up, like I said, we're going to cover up a whole bunch of this color, but in the meantime, it's a great, you know, it'll be a good contrast and it helps lead your eye through the piece. So this is where, I don't know if y'all have downloaded the color guide I put out, but this is like a great way to lead your eye through your painting with color. So as you're seeing this, like you'll see how oh, your eye will be like, oh, pop, 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 pop. It keeps attracting your eye because these colors are so different from the other colors you have. But towards the finished painting, you're going to, you, uh, as you progress through the painting, they do need to be used in moderation. Like, and like right now, it doesn't feel like moderation. But as we go forward, it will be because, like I said, we're going to cover up a lot of this color. And at any part of the process, like, eh, you make a mistake. I don't know, like, I, I, I don't like this. It kind of doesn't make sense. It's kind of a, it's kind of an awkward branch. It just isn't doing anything for me. So you can, you can change what you're doing. This is acrylic. You... Um, you have the power to create your own destiny. And I don't want you guys to be afraid of messing up or making a mistake or passing the point of no return because you can, I, I want you guys to be confident in the fact that you can always do another. There's always another painting. Um, and the more paintings you do, the better you will get. All right, so now we're going to come in with another color. All right, here's an awkward thing that I'm trying to, that I need to work out. What is in front of what? This tree is in the back, and then it looks like this tree and then this tree. So I just need to make sure that the, uh, the uh, I have leaves overlapping in the trunks so that it makes sense, like, um, if that makes sense. So like I said, if you guys have questions, feel free to pop them into the question box. Um, If there's anything that's awkward about the camera angle or anything like that, 
um, please let me know. I have my iPad set up so I can actually like see it a little better than when I'm normally recording. This guy is going to go front. Something, something to know about, like, I prefer, and you will find your style, and you will figure out what you prefer. So everybody's going to paint differently. Um, I like really, really smooth painting surfaces, and that's part of... Um, it's just my style of painting and that's part of I don't have I don't load the brush as much I use a lot less paint than a lot of people um, and that's just my own personal style you will discover yours this uh, this wood I'm painting on a wood panel and so it has a definite grain to it and it's it almost as I'm painting it almost feels a little bit more like canvas so I'm not getting as smooth of a brush stroke as I typically prefer so um, I'm kind of fighting I'm kind of fighting the, the canvas and um, as you get better and get more established and figure out what you prefer, that's where you like, um, where you figure out where to spend money on your supplies. Like, you never want to be like this. Like this board, I would probably need to be sanded down to make smoother. Um, this is the only supplier I can find for this weird shape of board. So. When it arrives, it's pretty raw. I like to paint on the raw wood, but maybe it needs to be sanded. Like there's there's some things you figure out and you work through, and um, there's just these are details. Uh, can I adjust the paintings to the top of? Yes. There we go. I do not adjust in my panels. Um, when you use acrylic gesso, it is basically acrylic paint, and so I just put acrylic paint directly on the wood. Um, there are several contemporary painters now doing that, and then I seal when I seal it with the resin, it's all sealed. Um, so I've I've never had a problem. It uh, and I really do like the uh, when the wood kind of shows through in certain places. It's just sort of like seeing imperfections in the brushwork. You know that a person interacted with it. You know, like you see where it came from. You saw the process. It's like I, there's a, there's an artist out of San Francisco who does these beautiful cityscapes. And his name is Kim Kogan. And gosh, they're, they're super expensive paintings. And uh, he, you have this very meticulous, beautiful painting, and you can still see some of his like pencil work when he was initially sketching it in. And I think he got some pushback from the art community um, as to like, why can you see, still see your pencil work? And he was saying, you know, I, well, I want people to know this came from the hand of a person. And you look at like Leonardo da Vinci had just these incredible pencil drawings. So now I'm going in and I'm using different uh, medium tone greens I have about three or four greens on my palette, and I'm going to work back and forth between them to kind of work in the form of these trees. 
this is where we start covering up the crazy colors. It's like, oh gosh, purple. But the cool thing is, is when I go back in with the background, little peaks of the yellow and the purple will show through. And that's, you know, it adds little bits of color that sort you know, sprinkle in and sort of zhuzh. My word is zhuzh. No, that's not what I mean. Sorry, guys. In I don't know about y'all, but has Instagram been buggy with you guys or has it just been me? Um... I'm trying to tap screen share. There we go. Okay. I'm sorry. I was trying. I was trying to screen share with somebody, and Instagram got all weird. So, um, if you have a question, just pop in. Yeah. Yeah, it's been buggy. Like, I've been trying to, I was trying to send messages with people earlier today, and um, it was just being very weird. I don't know. It, it would, it would, I would read a message, and then it would say I had never read the message, and then it wasn't sending the message. <laughs> so, I apologize if it's, uh, if things have felt a little off that has been Instagram today. So I want you guys to take a look at <laughs> the palm tree that the comments are mostly covering up, honestly. Um, but as I'm developing it, we're covering up a lot of the purple and it's starting to feel a lot more like a palm tree. Um, but you get these little brilliant shots of these colors. And I, I, I don't know how to stress enough, like as you work, you'll figure out what you like, what you don't like, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. And you need to listen to that and honor that. Like don't just paint like somebody else. Like I took, I've taken workshops with lots of artists and like some really, really phenomenal people. And, um, you know, you always pick up a tip or two but you need to figure out how that works in your art practice. Like, like I, I remember, gosh, I remember I went to a workshop with this phenomenal plein air painter in California. He was such a nice guy. And I was like, so young. I, w I was just looking for mentors and like, people that would teach me. I didn't go to art school and there, there weren't a lot of ways to learn. So I went to this, I went to this workshop and, um, his name was, Ran his name is Randall Sexton. He's this beautiful, beautiful plein air painter in, I think he lives in Northern California, but I took the course in, um, Southern California. And so he paints plein air and it, the entire plein air process is like, I've always found very challenging. And so when you go to a workshop, you kind of paint like that painter for a few days. Um, but I came out of there with like two or three things that I could apply to my art practice. Um. Quinacridone Nickel Azo. Gosh, I haven't used that color in a really long time. I think that's probably, if I remember it, I think it's probably a pretty good, it might be, I think, wait, do I have it? Um, I might have that color. I think that color is more acidy 
And that's not a technical term. Actually, let's let's look at them side by side. I just dumped it on my head. So this is, here we go. You guys are asking. This is Australian Sienna. This is Nickel Azo Yellow. Um, let me grab a piece of paper and we will see. I haven't painted with that color in a very long time. This tube is probably pretty old. So let's see. gonna be more like a nickel azo looks like it's gonna be more like a gold ochre and Australian sienna is gonna be more like a um, a golden it's gonna have a lot more orange in it okay so this is nickel azo it's actually really pretty um, it's gonna, this is gonna be a more lemony golden. This is with white. Let's add a little bit more white so that you guys can see. Can you all kind of see the difference? I know it's hard to see color with this lighting. This is not like proper studio lighting. And this is Australian Sienna. I'd say uh, Australian Sienna is much more, I know this yellow, I need to break this out a little bit more. See, y'all just made me discover a color that I haven't used in forever. That's a beautiful acid yellow. Like, y'all, look at this. Look at this next to some lime green. Let's just let's just let's just play for a second. Oh, look at that. Look at that next to lime green. That's so pretty. And look at it next to uh here's here's the test. Look at it next to some purple. Look at that guys. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a great one. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't busted out nickel azo yellow in forever. Australian sienna is much more like a, um, oh, what did I say? Yeah, nickel azo right here is much more like a golden ochre, and this winds up being like a um, Indian yellow. If you're familiar in oils with Indian yellow, um, that's what this is a lot more like. So I, it's funny cause I really don't use a lot of yellow. I tend to like, this is about as yellow as I go in my palette. And once again, this is just my personal taste. So as we're talking about, I don't want you guys to be afraid of exploring a new color and like trying it out and just experimenting because you learn. Like I just learned I need to try this nickel azo yellow out a little bit more and have some fun with it. Man, that's gorgeous. Um, and then I totally lost what I'm doing. We are working in this tree. And so uh, this texture, is much harder. So you need to make sure you have more paint on your brush. And uh, yeah, you need to make sure that you have a lot more paint on the brush. All right, so I'm gonna come in here. We're gonna start. Um, 
Kelly, it is... All right, there is no quinacridone actually in here. <gasps> so I might have a different color. It, I ha this is nickel azo yellow, and that's backwards, so apologies. Um, it's just nickel azo yellow. So if there is a quinacridone, nickel gold, the, yeah, I mean, this is, let me, let me look through the comments. Um, let's see. Quin, quinacridone nickel azo gold. I don't have quinacridone nickel azo gold. I do have nickel azo yellow. Um, that's, there's so many words. <laughs> like the, the color names get ridiculous, y'all. So I'm coming in here and I'm starting to, I've come through and I've kind of like figured out what my little, some different, uh, some different accent colors I'm gonna have that still kind of fall within the general color theme of not anachronous, it's a, analogous. So an, an analogous color theme is colors that are all adjacent to one another on the color wheel. And so this is a predominantly analogous color scheme. And then I use a couple accent colors that are almost complements, but not quite. Um, yeah, your gold one looks close. Um, yeah, it's it's all. Yeah, I think I think the gold one would be close, and that's what I would say. And this is what I always tell y'all: like, uh, just try it, see it, try it, see if you like it. I might like Australian sienna you might like the gold and that's going to skew your that's going to skew your colors that you use but your colors are going to reflect your personality and you know the colors that you use are not going to be the exact same colors that I use and they shouldn't be like to, while you're learning yeah okay that's one thing but like as you come into your own and as you're really exploring start thinking about like what what you like what makes and the best way to figure out what you like is to figure out what you don't like so you know go through and be like i don't like this you love blue oh my gosh my favorite color is blue <laughs> my husband has um basically periwinkle my husband nicknamed shelby blue like he, he'd see something and he'd be, he would just get it in shelf um, right, So, let's see. And by the way, as, as we are working through this painting, because of what I had done earlier, we're kind of uh, not resurrecting him, but we're it wasn't in like a great place. So we're there's a lot of work that needs to happen. <coughs> Goodness. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I have told you guys this, but um, when I was in college, I was friends with a group of guys, and they were, they were all just some of the just wonderful friends, and we're all still friends to this day. One of them... Um, I married, that's my husband, um, and we just had a, a really lovely large group of friends, and uh, let's see, let's do a, let's make this interesting, um, and two of my guy friends for one of my birthdays, my husband and his best friend at the time, for my birthday, I was a finance major, I thought I was going to be going into finance. And they got me a fan deck 
from Sherwin Williams for my birthday. And, um, I mean, like, it, it's almost like they knew who I was. And a lot of people in my life have known who I was and what I was meant to be doing before I was ever willing to accept it and embrace it. And it's been just like, it's been really, like I've always just loved color. And I've loved seeing lots of colors and seeing them arranged together and um, it's, it's really, it's, it's something that truly brings peace to me. And it, it took a long time to realize that that was okay and there was a place in life where you can do that and figure out how to make a living. But I just thought it was really cool that some of these people in my life saw me for who I was before I was willing to accept it. So Patolas, I can draw a beach behind the palm trees, but I'm not going to today because this isn't really a about the beach. This is about the palm trees and so I want the focus to be on the palm trees. Um, it's more about the colors and trying and working with the positive and negative space. I've done, yeah, I've, I've done beach scenes and we've done palm trees on the beach and we've done things like that, but that's eh, not what this one's about. And that's what, like, anytime you set out to do a painting, it really helps to figure out what you're trying to say, like, what you're trying to talk about, what's important. Um, and whether it's just like, hey, guess what's important? The palm tree is the important part. Then you, wait for it, then you don't lose the forest for the trees. Yeah, that was a really bad pun, guys. Sorry. I apologize. Wow, that was so bad. So bad. So, y'all tell me, what are your plans this weekend? Do you have anything exciting going on? We are working on some home improvement projects. Um, we've been replastering a lot of the house. Did I skip the becoming a graphic designer phase? I guess I did. I but the, I was uh, so in short like I was a finance major pre two thousand and eight. Graduated, was working in wealth management, and um, it was weird because I was in a bank and I was pretty disturbed at like the lending practices that were going on and then I moved to uh, Houston to get to be with my husband and get married and I changed careers and I started working in sales for a company that specialized in um, faux finishing um Weekend plans equal paint. Amazing! I'm jealous of you guys. I'm gonna paint, but I'm gonna paint the house. Not like. <laughs> and can I hashtag I hate painting houses? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just not fun. Um, it uses different muscles. You're, it's awkward. It's not fun. So, um, yeah, I was working for a faux finishing company doing sales. And I'd been told you can't make a living as an artist. So then I went to work for this company and they were specializing in like, y'all, I bid, I bid some crazy stuff. This was like, 
Crete 08 Houston Hank Mansions. So, like one guy had a 10,000 square foot garage. Garage. And he wanted the ceiling of his garage to look like the Sistine Chapel. Except he wanted his face as God, of course. <laughs> so. Um, ooh, Zoom Happy Hour, that sounds fun. That sounds like so much fun. Ton of wallpaper to rip down. Yeah, we're doing that too. Like we're fixing plaster. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, so I realized the, 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 the important life that I learned from that step was I realized that people are making a living from art. And I know that sounds like nowadays with how things are, that seems like a silly revelation, but you know, I grew up in a very small town in South Carolina and uh, there, everyone was like, if you want to go do art, you go to New York City and you starve. Um, there wasn't like a whole lot of examples of successful artists or like then you go be a college professor somewhere and um, that was kind of the only path that was ever laid out. Like graphic design wasn't even really out there as like an option. I didn't know what that was. So just seeing that somebody was doing something tangentially art related and like my boss that owned the company, she'd gone to RISD and um, they were, they were not, not only were they making a living, but they were employing several artists. So they were doing well enough that they could pay other people to also create art. And like, we're not, we're not gonna splice hairs about like how elevated or, or great, you know, a garage with your face on it for the Sistine Chapel is. Um, we're, we're not even gonna go into that debate. Um, this background color, is it's gray and white so it's a lighter gray i just use for shortcuts when i'm doing shortcuts i use new golden has some great neutral grays and so i'm just using this plus white i grew up in south uh in hilton head um so yeah it's it, it was small town we we we're a little bit more cosmopolitan than a typical 20,000 person town, but still it's pretty small. I didn't realize how small until I started trying to navigate, like getting my daughter into school and there's more than one school. <laughs> like, there's, there's just choices. We, we had one school. You could go to one school for every stage unless you went private. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not going to finish this tonight, but this will give you guys a good idea of like kind of how the progress is going. And I'm going to focus, I'm focusing on the, uh, the area that's not covered by the comments so that y'all can see a little bit better. And this is, as we've been talking about, these are like, this is how you define tree holes. And this is how you define it as much by where the tree is as where the tree isn't. Yeah, Marguerite grew up in Camden. Camden. We played, I definitely played soccer in the Camden Cup, by the way. Um. Oh yeah, you got married in Folly? Oh my gosh, so right out of college, right out of college when I was working finance, I lived in Charleston. Um, I was working for BB, I was working for bb and in their wealth management department. And uh, I lived like two blocks off the battery in downtown Charleston on King Street. It was this amazing tiny apartment that was like a dream apartment. 
Um, what's it like to hang at outdoor art festivals? Do you make friends with other artists? Um, yeah, we do. It's, it's like they, the festival circuit becomes like sort of your coworkers, you know, except sometimes you don't see them for months. And in order to live that sort of traveling lifestyle, we're all, I joke that it's like a carny lifestyle. And I do, I do love it. Like I, I love my family. I love um, being here, but there's a certain amount of freedom for being on the road and like getting to go and set up and travel. And um, I do love that aspect of it. And my husband is, you know, super supportive and totally lets me go. Um, and yeah, we there's there's it's like any. You think about like realtors or um, you, any independent sort of business. You do interact with each other, and you do find people that uh, you know you'll grab dinner with, or um, we're all too tired to like go out. Um, but you you form a rapport, and they're your coworkers, and they watch your back, and. Um, a lot of us wind up being on our own. So like if you need to go to the bathroom during the day or whatever and you don't have somebody helping you, like they'll watch your booth and they'll help people coming in answer your questions and they'll let they'll let you know that um, they'll let like customers know that you'll be right back. Um, so it is it is and then you know you you form a network and they you exchange and you exchange resources and help each other out. And it, it becomes this like super supportive network. And I will say like you guys online have been absolutely my saving grace um, with everything that's been going on. Y'all have been incredible and amazing. Um, it's, I couldn't be doing this without y'all. And I met a lot of y'all through the shows and I know there are a lot of artists on the circuit that don't, haven't met people or continue the relationships online and are, are hurting really badly because the festivals really are their only income and they've all been canceled. So I can't thank you guys enough for being here and showing up. And um, before six weeks ago, I had never talked before. And you guys have just really unlocked this thing that I didn't know I had in me and I couldn't thank you guys enough. It's It's been incredible and I've really enjoyed interacting with you and all of your uh, successes. That's just been incredible. Like I love seeing you guys shine. Um, go rock it. I, so I was supposed to be at the art market at Honeyhorn next weekend, but they canceled it. <laughs> um, right now, I am. they have not, and I was also, so as a backup, I was going to do the, what do you call it? The I was going to do Bluffton May Fest for the Rotary that also got canceled. Um, and then I was, I'm supposed to do the Nash Gallery Memorial Day Art Festival that may or may not get canceled. So, I, my parents are still on Hilton Head. I grew up there. I love going there. I love going to shows there. Um, if the Memorial Day one gets canceled, I will prob I will be at the, gosh, what is it called? I'll be at the Rotary, no, not the Rotary one the Bluffton Village Fest in October. Um, that is the plan. That I love that festival. I worked that beer tent many times um, growing up. So, yeah. No, I, I love Hilton Head. I go back. I haven't, haven't been able to see my parents because of all this in a while. And so um, when I can make a show and it lines up, I love going back to Hilton Head for shows. I did the Honeyhorn show last year and the Bluffton show. 
My funniest art show story. Um, I don't know about funniest. I've had like, I've had my tent blow over. That was kind of crazy. That was at a honeycorn last year because I was in the middle of a field and I hadn't had time to uh, stake it, but I, I was like, oh, I have weights, I'm good. No, it wasn't good. So <laughs> the tent totally cartwheeled and blew over. Um, oh yeah, yeah. No, it, it's, it's, yeah, I love going to Mountain Head. It's, uh, I will, once shows get back up and running, I will definitely let you guys know. And also, right now, I'm keeping my, uh, keeping the website updated. So if you guys are looking for anything big, let me know. And I just can't thank you guys enough. Like, this is... These have been such wonderful evenings with you. And um, next week is going to be our last week of Art After Dark. And then we will be launching something that gives us access to better technology and some better quality videos. And then I can go deeper with you guys in the teaching of everything. And um, we'll be asking for you know, a very select group of founding members to get started so that we can, you know, really keep it focused and personalized and concentrated so that we can develop this into, you know, something that's valuable for everyone and keep it very, you know, special. Oh my gosh, craziest questions. How did I develop my style? Let's start with that. How do I develop my style? It, my style has crept up on me. Um, there are just certain things that you realize they keep popping up again. Like I almost don't know how to paint without light ultramarine blue. That's that Shelby blue. Um, there are just things about your personality that pop out. Like even when you're trying to learn a style or learn something else like there are just the way you move a brush is just like the way you sign a sign your painting uh, I'm sorry, not sign your painting like your signature it's gonna be unique and I know that sounds fuzzy but it just comes out so you you have to like really every time you paint you have to think of why you like something or why you don't and really go into the why and really go into the, really examine every piece you do and, and don't, be, don't be critical of it, but like ask questions of yourself. Like, do I like this color? Do I like this color? Um, do I wish it was more neutral? Do I like, do I want things to be more bright? Like really as your pain and learning ask yourself tough questions and things you like do more of and things you don't like do less of. I know that I know that sounds probably a little bit trite, but there's no like you're going to find your style is going to be the brushes you like to use, the amount of paint you like to put on your brush, the kind of canvas you like to use. And that will all translate into your style. Um, gosh. Absolutely, guys. You guys have been awesome. It's, it's, it's kind of it's a tough time all around for everybody. And it's if I can just be here and give, it has really been incredible. And it has, and you guys have given to me as well. So thank you. Um, and I really want to, I really want to see you guys succeed. And I want to see what you, where you can go with your creativity. Will I show an update on this painting in the future? Absolutely. I'll show some progress. Because this is, I'd say this is like, 
50, this is about 50% done because I need to come in and I need to, um, oh geez, I have like four minutes left. Sorry guys, got carried away. Um, like this guy really needs to be done. It needs to be defined better. And, um, I don't know, you, you guys probably can't tell, but this part of the, um, board is surprisingly, uh, rough for the way I like to move the, with the brush. So you guys that were asking about your style, like this is super rough. So every time I try to put a brush stroke on there, it catches and it, it doesn't, it doesn't go on smoothly like I like it. So I don't know if I'll go in and like, I might go in and just sand out that portion of the painting, but what I, maybe I'll post a time lapse so you guys can see what, what I do from here. Um, but yeah, you just kind of, you just kind of go in and you, as we've been talking about over the weeks, you know, you push and pull and you, you, you give some and you take some away and you'll mess up, you go over it and it's a, it's a dance. You dance with the paints and you kind of see where you go and, and you eventually get there. Um, so yeah, I'll make sure when I do this. Um, I'll either do like a video or a time lapse or something so you guys can watch me finish it. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's about 50 to 75% of the way there. It's all of a sudden it'll come together. This is quite honestly what I call, um, the, uh, ugly duckling stage. This is like when we're all 13 and we have braces and, um, then it will all of a sudden get its glow up and it'll just come together and it'll come into its own and it will be the hot girl at prom. Um, it's kind of crazy how that happens. And you have to fight through this stage to get there. And it's, it's a little hard to, it's a little hard to see for me. Like, and when you're the artist, like, I think this stage is a stage a lot of people would get frustrated and just, be like, I, I can't do it. I'm done. It's too much. But this is, this is a stage that if you push through, you can really start making some magic. Um, so, yeah. Any last minute questions? We have, uh, we have some exciting things coming through. I think we're going to be opening the inner circle on Monday and it's going to be a super limited release and you guys will get to continue these lessons and um, we'll get to learn more together and, and, and really make some magic um, and it's going to be it's going to be an affordable price point that everyone can afford and it'll be at a nice slow pace I don't want to overwhelm everybody <laughs> drink my drink? I, I think I will do that. Um, so thank you guys. It's been a wonderful night. Seriously, never knew hibiscus simple syrup was that easy. <laughs> but uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to DM me. And this has been an absolute pleasure. And next week, tune in because we're going to be painting a bigger painting in stages. So we'll go through the beginning, the middle, and hopefully we'll get to the end. If we don't get to the end, I'll post like a time lapse like this one. Um, so thank you guys and enjoy your weekend. It's been just a pleasure.